What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and you're watching our Big Ten football channel. We will begin our Big Ten tournament here on NCAA football, part of the GOAT tournament uh, that we're doing here across all of our channels. The ga first game of this tournament will be on Sunday. And it will begin on Sunday at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. 2 o'clock Eastern Time. And you can see the complete schedule at SG1Sports.com. Uh, you can get all the information here on the GOAT tournament. If you don't know what this is, just go uh, to the website and check it out. So here's the bracket. And uh, I know people ask, well, why is Nebraska in this tournament? Nebraska wasn't in the Big Ten in 2002. Well, we're going with today's conferences for all the tournaments so that uh, it's an even playing field. And with the point system that we have in place, it's only fair that everyone competes against the same teams as we go through this. So Nebraska is the one seed in the West. Iowa will host Minnesota uh, in the West. And then Illinois will host Wisconsin. And then Purdue is the two seed. They will host Northwestern. If you have no idea about these teams and you're doing the Sim Pick Challenge, don't worry. In just a second, I'm going to go over the top players for each team and give you the overall rating for each team on the game. And uh, if you don't know what the Sim Pick Challenge is, I'll tell you about that in a second as well. So that's the west side of the bracket over on the east. And just to, to be clear, this is NCAA football 2003, but it's the 2002 college football season. So the roster is from the 2002 college football season. So Ohio State, number one there in the east. Penn State will be the four seed. They will host Michigan State. Michigan, the three, they will host Indiana. And then Maryland will host Rutgers, two versus seven, two teams that actually weren't even in the Big Ten at this time. But like I said, we're going with today's conferences. Uh, so in just a second, I'll go over uh, the, the top players, the quarterbacks, the running backs for each team. But let me tell you about the Sim Pick Challenge just in case you don't know what this is. The Sim Pick Challenge is a contest, it's a game uh, that goes across all of our channels where you get a chance to pick who will win simulations in college football, and we're going to be doing other sports as well. Uh, you will have There will be a point system, you'll get points for your correct picks, and in a, this will span over several months, and when the contest is over, the winner, the person with the most points, will get a $100 prize. And if you want a little bit more information on this, just go to the website sg1sports.com. We also did a video on this on the main uh, college football channel as well if you want to go back and check that out uh, also uh, but this will be part of this all of the goat tournaments will be part of this and again if you want to read about uh, or no, get a little bit more information about the ncaa football goat tournaments as well where we're looking to determine the greatest of all time the greatest college football program of all time and in, in the ncaa football video game history uh, just go to the website you can find out all that information right there uh, but now let's go ahead and look at uh, the top players and the overall ratings for each of the teams uh, that are in our Big Ten tournament here on NCAA Football 2003. All right, let's go through the Big Ten teams, and we're going to go in alphabetical order, starting with Illinois. Illinois had some pretty highly rated players in 2002. How about these cornerbacks? A 96 and a 94 overall corner. That is uh, going to be tough to throw the ball against. An interesting thing if you maybe are thinking about matchups. Uh, right tackle, 92. Brandon Lloyd, remember him from his time in the NFL in 92. So they had some good wide receivers and some good cornerbacks. Uh, this team is a B overall, by the way, a B overall. Quarterback was Dustin Ward, and their running back was Antonio Harris. Uh, so there are some of the top players from Illinois. Let's go now to Indiana. Oops, Indiana right there. Uh, left tackle, their top player. Matt Lavecchio was the quarterback. I, I remember him a little bit. Um, not really recognizing any other names here for Indiana. They were a B minus, a B minus. I uh, just showed you the quarterback. Running back was Brian Lewis. So that's it for Indiana. We move on now to Iowa. They were a B overall. Uh, and of course, their top player is an offensive lineman. No surprise there. Uh, Bob Sanders, safety. I uh, don't really remember many of these players. Let's see who was the uh, who's the quarterback for this team. Brad Banks. Yes, remember him. Uh, this was actually a really good Iowa team that season. I know in our bracket uh, they come out as the, the number four seed, but that's because we're going with these preseason rosters on the game. Uh, this was actually a really good Iowa team. Brad Banks at quarterback. Aaron Greving at running back. Don't really remember him all that much. 
Let's see, C.J. Jones at wide receiver. Uh, so there you go with Iowa. Um, let's move on now. Next is Maryland. Of course, Maryland, I guess, would have been in the ACC this season, not the Big Ten, but we're putting all the teams in their current conferences so that uh, it's fair when you compare the uh, the standings at the end. So E.J. Henderson at 99 overall linebacker. Had Bruce Perry at running back. Uh, as you take a look at some of their top players, they were actually pretty good. A B-plus on the game, and they were ranked number 21. That's why they're the number two seed in the east even ahead of michigan and penn state is this a pretty good maryland team uh scott mcbrien was the quarterback and we just showed you bruce perry also had jason crawford at running back as well uh, let's move on now to our next team it's going to be michigan let's see michigan is uh on this game they're a, a b and they're ranked number 19 so they're ranked higher than maryland they're number 19 but maryland's number 21 but Maryland gets the higher seeding because we're looking more at the rating on the game, not the ranking. Maryland a B plus, Michigan only a B. Uh, only use the rankings for tiebreakers if two teams, you know, if both teams are a B, then I would have Michigan ahead of Maryland. So again, uh, ratings are the number one thing when we do our seeding. Here is the, the top. Here are the top players for uh, Michigan. They had Chris Perry at running back, Ronald Bellamy. Who was the quarterback this season? It was John Navarre. John Navarre, the quarterback for Michigan. Uh, and again, Chris Perry there at running back. So Michigan, a B. Also Michigan State, a B. Uh, Michigan State is a B, and they were ranked number 24 on the game. Top player, Charles Rogers, one of the top wide receivers uh, in Michigan State history. And again, this was a um, pretty good roster here. A B overall and the team that was ranked uh, their quarterback was Jeff Smoker I don't really remember him there's Drew Stanton as a true freshman uh, but Jeff Smoker the top quarterback on the game and Dewan Moss at running back so don't remember a ton about this Michigan State team I do remember Charles Rogers that's about it again this was a long time ago we go now to Minnesota uh, you take a look their top players a punter this Minnesota team was uh, a B overall in the game, not ranked. Can't skip over Marion Barber. Uh, they had some really good running backs back in this era. The quarterback was Asad A. Kalik. I, I barely, maybe remember him a little bit, don't remember much, but I do remember Marion Barber, a very talented running back. And they had, they had some years where they had like two really good running backs. Um, so, Again, Minnesota, a B overall. We go now to Nebraska. Nebraska, the number one team in the West. And again, I know they weren't in the Big Ten this season, but we have to put the teams all in the same conferences or the point system really doesn't work. Uh, so Nebraska here, they were number 10 in the country on the game, and they were a B plus. B plus, number 10 in the country. You take a look at some of their top players. Who was the quarterback for this Nebraska team? How about Jamal Lord? probably remember him a dual threat guy and uh, they had Darian Diedrich at running back let's just see who was I really don't remember a lot about this Nebraska team I do remember Jamal Lord the quarterback but I don't remember a ton about this Nebraska team uh, let's go now to Northwestern Northwestern a B minus B minus on this game Take a look at their top players. Who's the quarterback of this North? I don't think I'm going to remember him. Tony Staus. Uh, yeah, I remember him a little bit. Remember the name a little bit. Jeff Bax. Um, Northwestern really wasn't very good back then. Again, the B minus here on this game. Ohio State is next, the number one seed in the East. Mike Daw, safety, their top player. There's Will Smith. Dustin Fox, so no quarterbacks or running backs here in their top players or wide receivers. That's interesting. Craig Krenzel was the starting quarterback, a 76 overall. Um, and he had Liddell Ross at running back. But check out the number two, Maurice Claret. I think most people probably remember him. Uh, and, you know, I don't remember this season all that well, but I'm pretty sure he wound up being the, the main running back that year. They had Michael Jenkins at wide receiver, Chris Vance, Chris Gamble. 
uh, had some very talented players, as they always do at Ohio State. Uh, but they were, the again, the top-ranked team. Well, actually, no, Nebraska was ranked higher than them. Nebraska was number 10, Ohio State number 12. Both teams were B-pluses. So it, let's say it did come down to those two teams in the championship game. They're both a B-plus. That's when we would go to the rankings for home field advantage. So Nebraska would actually have home field advantage, uh, in case you were wondering about that part of it. Um, yeah, they... Uh, Interesting, though. Interesting there. Yeah, oh, what I was going to say, apologize for the delay there. Uh, there. There's no neutral field games on NCAA Football 2003. The games that have those will put them, the championship games, on a neutral field. But if they don't have that, we're just going to go with the higher uh, ranked team. So that's why, again, if it came down to Nebraska and Ohio State, and who knows if it will, but if it did, Nebraska would get home field advantage. Uh, so I just wanted to clear that up. And I should probably make sure I mention that on all the videos. Penn State is up next. Penn State ranked number 18. They were a B. Uh, as you take a look at some of their top players, Bryant Johnson. Uh, there's Larry Johnson. Boy, he was a really good running back. I remember him very well. Uh, so this was a, a talented team in Nebraska and, excuse me, in Penn State. Uh, let's take a look. Their starting quarterback, Zach Mills. I do remember him. I remember Michael Robinson as well. Uh, and then, again, there is Larry Johnson. So a good Penn State team. Going to be some competitive games, I think, in the Big Ten. Now let's move on now to Purdue. Purdue was a B on this game. This would have been after the Drew Brees era. Uh, you take a look at some of their top players. Who was the starting quarterback on this team? Let's see. It was Kyle Orton. So, yeah, not a bad not a bad quarterback to, to come in after Drew Brees. He was an 82 on the game, and you had Montreal Lowe at running back. So Purdue, a B overall. We have two teams left. We'll go to Rutgers next. They were not very good. They were a C. So, Rutgers, it's the same story as we get today. They were the bottom ranked team, rated team in the Big Ten on this game, just like they are today. And as you take a look at their top players, and they would have been in the Big East, I think, at this time. So, they weren't even in the Big Ten yet. Uh, their starting quarterback, Ryan Cubitt, do not remember him. Marcus Jones, right about, I don't remember anyone from this Rutgers team, probably because uh, they were just in the Big East. I don't know. One more team, though, Wisconsin. They were a B overall. Not ranked, but they were a B overall, so a decent rating. And they will be our final team here in the Big Ten. As we got to go all the way through the U's and the V's to get to Wisconsin. There you go. Top players, Ben Johnson, left tackle. Top two players, offensive lineman. Anthony Davis, we all know uh, how good he was. One of the better running backs um, in the Big Ten. And then you had Lee Evans at wide receiver. So they had some good players. Who was the quarterback? Brooks Bollinger. Remember him? Uh, he was the quarterback. Not a superstar, but pretty good. Wisconsin's had like the same roster for 20 years. It's really, there's been no change in how they do things up there. Uh, Anthony Davis, the starting running back. Of course, uh, like I said, one, a really good running back. Lee Evans was really good as well, wide receiver. Uh, Jonathan Orr on this roster, he was pretty good. Don't know if I remember Darren Charles, but that's the roster for Wisconsin. We've now shown you all of the teams in the Big Ten. Uh, and if I didn't mention it, Wisconsin was a B overall. They're the number six seed in the West, um, despite having, again, a pretty good team. So it'll be really interesting. I think the Big Ten is is a conference where there is a lot of parity. We could see a lot of upsets, and it's probably going to be pretty hard to predict what is going to happen. Uh, should be a lot of fun. But those are the rosters here, again, for the Big Ten, the top players, quarterbacks, and running backs on NCAA football 2003.